Hello, folks. Welcome to another episode of Burning Platform. Last month, I had the opportunity to spend Guzoho Day, actually three days, in uh, McAllen, Texas, as part of the Goho Analyst Summit. Great event. I've written quite a bit about it, presented different perspectives. But one session in particular caught my attention. It would cut my attention because it shows Zoho's ambitions across three dimensions. One is in moving beyond just the SME market into the enterprise market. Second is it shows their global ambitions, um, you know, as they get into different localization, payroll in different countries. And third, it shows their vertical ambitions. And, you know, as you'll see, uh, it's taken them into a number of different industries, edge applications in different industries. I invited Siba Ramakrishnan, who heads their finance group. He goes as Siva in short, to join me and present a shorter version of what he presented at the event. Here's my conversation with Siva. A real pleasure to have Siva from Zoho. Uh, you know, I, I don't want to pronounce his last name. It's even longer than mine. Um, Siva, maybe you can you can pronounce it properly. Great to have you. It was good to meet you in Texas a couple of weeks ago, and I'm looking forward to this. You know, you you you, you guys have always had some accounting capabilities, but this is what you showed is really very very ambitious. So I'm looking forward to listening to you present it again. Thank you. Um, thanks, uh, thanks, Nini. Uh, good morning to you, and uh, thanks for having me on this. Um, it's always a pleasure uh, talking to you. Um, my full name is uh, Sivaramakrishnan Ishwaran. I know it's difficult for most of uh, the folks, particularly uh, uh, in the West, to pronounce my name. Uh, so you can always call me uh, Siva. That's a lot easier. Well, thank you for making it easy for me. <laughs> <laughs> Siva, how, you know, we're going to talk a lot about finance, but would you like to present a few slides first and talk about you know, your vision, with how it's shaping up? Would that be the easy way to do it? Sure, I can. I can do that. Uh, so uh, let me just uh, share my uh, screen. You're able to see that. Yep. So, um, see, uh, it's not just about finance. Okay. So we are a finance and operations platform. Okay. So, so typically, when whenever people talk about finance, they always talk about some accounting software. Uh, some business intelligence around uh, the accounting software and all those. But we have always thought about it in a holistic way. So whenever we call it Soho Finance, uh, it's it's a complete suite of products. Uh, starting from billing, uh, we include all the pieces of inventory to everything. So it's, it's finance plus operations. The goal actually with which we started our finance is to empower businesses across segments industries and countries to achieve operational efficiency and financial excellence while ensuring compliance, right? Too many, too many words here. One is the operational efficiency. Next is you have the financial excellence and then ensuring compliance, right? All these things are uh, very complex. See, the thing is like uh, right from the day when we started the product or when we thought about doing this finance and operations platform, we were very clear. We did not want to restrict ourselves to any particular segment. That is, we did not want to call ourselves uh, software for SMEs or software for enterprise, right? We wanted, we were very clear that we wanted to serve all the segments. Now, the obvious question will be like, uh, how can uh, you serve all the segments? I will, I will cover that part later when I uh, do my presentation because we are actually building a couple of platforms uh, uh, leveraging the knowledge that we have gained over the period of time. And, uh, when it comes to industries, again, our goal was very clear. Uh, we actually, uh, uh, though we will have a lot of verticals uh, built on our platform, we did not want to restrict ourselves to any particular industry. And right from day one, our approach has been very global. Um, so we wanted to do software um, for all the markets. Like um, uh, we, we want to expand as much as possible. So that's that has been our goal, okay? And with this goal, we actually started building a platform. We started by building a platform for SMEs. Okay, so we did not we did not want to create a specific product, right? Typically, if you take the SaaS world, 
it is very common to start with the product and uh, most of the companies just shop there right uh, you would a lot of lot of saas companies are known for this known as this one product company right but when we started we had a very different goal we wanted to create a platform and on that platform we wanted to create a suite of products so that's how we started so obviously we started with one product on the platform and then the platform as the platform was maturing we kept adding products to it and as more products got added the platform was maturing faster okay the first product that we started with was invoicing and billing right um again uh, this is a product focused on smes and uh, we have excellent traction for the product uh, today uh, this product actually brings us about uh, 40 to 50000 sign ups every month okay so that's the kind of traction that we are uh, seeing on the invoicing solution and uh, we also launched zogo billing recently which is actually seeing uh, excellent traction then we started focusing on the accounting product because invoicing is more of receivables that is it took care of the money coming into the business whereas accounting is more holistic so we started working on our accounting product today zoho books is one of the uh, flagship product that we have uh, we launched accounting product somewhere around 2012 and uh, today it's seeing excellent tractions in uh, uh, the north american market and uh, we are actually fast becoming one of the leaders in countries like india middle east and all these countries see but your definition of accounting is general ledger accounts payable uh, accounts receivable what else it, it does yes. it include fixed assets yeah so i'll i'll just explain that a bit see um as i mentioned we started with billing so this is this is this takes care of all the receivables part of the business right okay. so all the way from sending a bill to your customer or maybe we can even start it prior like say for example you can actually create your product catalog you can add your contacts um you can send you can create beautiful invoices you can actually send them to your customers handle all your uh, uh, discounting offers loyalty programs and all those things uh send out those invoices and most importantly you can also receive online payments for those invoices so we also have integration with payment gateways and all those okay so that is the receivable part so that's how we got started in building so accounting uh, the zogo book software has all this on the receivable side and it also has everything on the payable side so right from creating your purchase order to managing your uh, bills that is the vendor who sends the bills to managing the payouts uh to the uh, vendors we also have a powerful inventory management solution which obviously is integrated with the accounting software so you can also manage your stocks inventory and all those things not just that when we talk about the inventory platform we have the complete order management system where you can even um receive orders that is this integrates well with the most popular marketplaces like say amazon uh hc ebay and all those so you can you can do a complete order management right so it is complete receivables payables um managing your inventory um all those and it also integrates well with our other pieces in finance and operations namely uh, travel and expense uh, management product right so you can this also integrates with that and we also have uh, something called uh, connected banking um uh, this is this is again a powerful piece because in, when you actually look at uh, most of the enterprises they actually have an finance system business finance system and then they will have their uh, uh, banking piece right for these two piece to talk together they will have something called uh, uh, host to host model where actually they will have to spend on servers installed in their uh, uh, network then they connect to the banking software do a whole lot of things right but we do something called connected banking this makes things a lot easier right from right from within the software software is integrated with the banking system so a lot of information can be pulled your uh, your daily statements can be pulled the reconciliation can be automated uh, you can initiate vendor payments if the if the bank has a powerful card system we can even integrate with their uh, corporate cards or the prepaid cards facilitate a whole lot of things so whatever whenever i talk about accounting it's more holistic it's not just about a uh, general ledger and uh, uh, small uh, other pieces so this is much more holistic and uh, again i i forgot to mention the most important piece the payroll right 
payroll, uh, the e-commerce part, all this is naturally integrated into the system. And payroll is primarily, what countries are you talking about? Um, so as I said, uh, we have a very global approach. Uh, uh, so we start with one country and keep expanding. Uh, when it comes specifically to payroll, we we have a, a edition for India. We have an edition for uh, UAE. Um, we cover about twenty five uh, states in uh, uh, the US. Uh, we are fast expanding it. Most probably in the next few months, we should have uh, complete coverage in US, US okay. and Canada as well. Pretty good. So we built a platform and we built a suite of products on the platform. Okay. And uh, we also made sure that all these products are customizable, extendable, and the workflow that we have on this product are automatable. Okay. And then we also have various AI modules, right? Uh, uh, I can actually have a whole uh, separate session on AI, so I'm not getting into that. Uh, so we have various AI modules, uh, and uh, these AI modules seamlessly integrates, contextually integrates into all these products. Okay. So see, typically whenever uh, people talk about uh, uh, products for SMEs, they always talk about the end user product. They don't talk about products that are uh, customizable or it is very difficult to even extend the products. But however, since we took a platform approach, we made it clear that all the products should be customizable, very easily extendable. That is, you should be able to uh, uh, use APIs or you should be able to create plugins or embed widgets into the product and all those things should be possible. This is what we ensured, okay? So this makes the platform really, really powerful. And since we took the platform approach, it was also easier for us to expand our geographical reach. Most of the, most of the products, if you actually look at it, they stop with one or two uh, regions. Right, say particularly in finance, it's very difficult because compliance, maintaining that compliance is very intensive. So if you actually look at uh, the popular finance software, uh, they will just literally restrict themselves to one or two regions. Okay, say uh, QuickBooks, right? 95% of their market share comes from, 95% uh, of their revenue comes from uh, US. Only 5% yes. of the remaining comes outside the world. And uh, even there actually, they are exiting most of the markets because of all the compliance regulations, rules, all those things, right? On the other hand, we are actually constantly expanding, right? Uh, so we have uh, uh, edition for all these countries, right? From uh, US to Canada, uh, most of the countries in Middle East, uh, edition for India. We are also expanding on uh, expanding in uh, the European market. So we have edition for all these countries. And most importantly, we are also accredited by most of the uh, central bodies. Like say, for example, we are recognized by uh, the uh, uh, HMRC in UK. We are one of the GST Suvita providers in India, ZATCA in uh, Saudi, uh, FTA in uh, uh, UAE, right? So we are into all this. And if you actually look at the compliance part, it's not just one-time effort. The rules and regulations keep changing, right? And that's that's the challenge. Um, most of the most of the products exit the market because it it's very difficult for them to follow all those rules, regulations, and keep updating the software on a regular basis. On the other hand, since we have taken a platform approach, it makes it easier for us to do it. Uh, say, for example, uh, uh, as new things comes in, like say, for example, e-invoice in India or KSA or Mexico, we are quickly able to support those things or corporate tax in UAE or audit trail in uh, India or UAE. So whenever new regulations comes in, we are able to support that. What do you find when it comes to these innovations like e-invoicing, right? A lot of governments around the world are looking at that. Are you finding there's a kind of a standard template they're using or is every one of them kind of doing their own thing? Uh, it's a mix of both. Uh, generally, a lot of countries uh, adopt uh, uh, specific standard, PayPal being uh, the most famous. Um, so it's it's a mix of both. And um, when you typically support one country, it's very easy for you to understand and extend the support for other countries. Okay, sure. So there can be some minor differences among the countries, but generally it is easy. It's not that difficult, particularly when it comes to e-invoicing. The tax law specifically can change, but when it comes to e-invoicing, it's not that different. Now, payroll must be very different, right? Payroll is so pretty... so. You don't you don't even have to think of countries when uh, you have to think of the complexity of payroll. You take a country, <laughs> a specific country like US, right, and the fifty different states that we have to support. You know the complexities, so uh, you will have to handle different rules, regulations, all the on the county level stuff, and all those things. It's really, really complex. Payroll is complex, yes. Okay. Right? Yeah. So, so extending the geographical reach is one, and uh, the platform approach also uh, helps us uh, to 
add or enhance our capabilities uh, due to lack of time. I'm not going to uh, into the specifics of all this. We can cover it later. And uh, to expand our offerings. Uh, so we keep adding new products, right? Uh, so that's uh, Zoho's magic. So people do ask like, uh, how do you keep uh, adding uh, products one after the other? And one of the secret is the platform approach that we have taken. So most of the things gets automated and it is very easy to build products on the platform. And uh, as our platform evolved, so did our ecosystem. Because uh, for a product company to be successful, ecosystem is very important. And uh, that's where uh, most of our focus have been off late. Uh, so we have been, um, since we are into the finance domain, uh, we have been busy adding um, accounting partners across the globe. Um, and uh, we have been signing various partnership with various accounting bodies across uh, the globe. Uh, the MOU with uh, ICAI in India and uh, uh, the one in uh, the UAE, these are uh, uh, important things. And we also have a set of integrators, system integrators uh, who actually uh, uh, customize our products for uh, the larger customers. Uh, mm -hmm. so, so when it comes to travel and expense and all, we have uh, literally large customers, customers with about uh, say uh, 20,000 employees, right? And these deals takes a lot of time. So we have system integrators who actually study the um, the requirements and then uh, customize the product. Um, because since we have taken the platform approach, it is easy for the system integrators to customize. So they actually take the product, customize it for the customers. So we have uh, travel partners. We have integrated with the uh, with GDS, uh, the likes of uh, Sabre. And uh, that makes it easier for uh, people to uh, book the flight tickets, the uh, um, the the cabs or the trains or uh, the hotels everything right from within the product so that's why I say like when I talk about finance and operations we are not limited to uh, just uh, the the chart of accounts the uh, the general ledger and all those I'm jumping ahead but when it comes to e-commerce you know you're dealing mm -hmm. with a whole bunch of new players right logistics players and so on and when you come to payments you're dealing with a whole bunch of financial institutions so that's that ecosystem is also very gr growing very quickly yes yes i have a few slides specific to that uh, yeah, uh, going please. forward so i'll cover that in that part and um, as said we have travel partners we have shipping partners we have banking partners uh, we have developers a complete set of developers who work on our uh, products and uh, they actually develop apps uh, for our products apps and plugins on our product we have about 240 plus apps uh, that the developers have developed and uh, we also have uh, uh, training institutes and educational institutions um, they actually uh, uh, look at our products and uh, when the product becomes popular, as I said, uh, uh, we are very popular and we are actually uh, uh, aiming for the pole position in some of these countries. So they're actually the training institutes uh, or the colleges, they actually take our product and try to embed it as part of their curriculum. Okay, so We have been uh, successful on that front as well. So a uh, powerful platform plus a strong ecosystem actually gives us the momentum and uh, we are seeing excellent momentum on uh, the uh, on the products. And as I said earlier, we are not limited to just SMEs, right? We want to be uh, uh, very clear. Like we we want to uh, have a platform for SMEs, a suite of products that serves the SMEs. And we also want to focus on the enterprise segment. So what we are doing is like using, we are, but but you know, enterprise is very different ball game, right? Um, so the scalability requirements are very different. The feature set that they look for is very different. Uh, the solutions that they look for is very different. Uh, to give you an example on uh, scalability, uh, if you actually look at uh, the uh, billing example, right? Uh, when you take a small or medium uh, company, they typically send about, say, uh, a couple of thousand invoices a month, or that's a max, right? But when you are talking about in a large enterprise, uh, take Zoho, for example, uh, we send about a million invoices every month, okay? So that's the scale that we are talking about. So the scalability requirement is very different. Uh, the features that they look for is very different. Like uh, to give you an ex example again on the AR front, if you are talking about a collection module for a small and medium business, uh, if you just um, have uh, the dunning management plus a uh, few reminders as features, uh, they are generally happy. But when you actually uh, talk to a collection uh, department in uh, enterprise, they will have about 10, 15 staffs just to focus on the collections. So you need a full-fledged, full-featured module for collections, right? So the requirements are very different. And, and when you enter an enterprise, uh, when you talk about the products, they are typically not interested. <laughs> they are more interested about, oh, okay, I have this problem, do you have a solution for it, right? So they, they, are, they take a very solution-centric approach, right? So 
so it's very different so uh, the enterprise ball game is very different from uh, the uh, sme so we completely understand that so what we are doing is like we are completely reimagining reengineering and creating a platform for enterprise we are using our experience on the sme side and we are creating a completely new platform for the enterprise and uh, just like we have a suite of products on the uh, uh, for the smes on the platform we will also have a suite of products for the enterprise on the enterprise platform so this is our typical strategy when it comes to software that's the first part typically i had uh, two parts for my presentation uh, the first part i just wanted to introduce you to the uh, the finance zoho finance and operations platform talk about the strategy that we had for smes and enterprise so this is this is the first part of the presentation the second part i am going to talk about some of the disruptive changes that we are seeing in the industry and how we as a company are going beyond software to uh, make the best use of those uh, disruptions so this is this is one popular quote you would have heard uh, uh, this became very famous during the uh, pandemic times right there are decades where nothing happens and there are weeks where decades happen and uh, this was specifically in the context of the pandemic induced acceleration to some of the uh, uh, the the growth that uh, the uh, the communication and collaboration products the retail products the cloud accounting products saw during the pandemic right uh, companies like zoom they had an excellent time and uh, and things just there is they they saw a hockistic uh, growth during those times see the the technology wise the products are always there you talk about the retail or you talk about the communication collaboration software or you talk about uh, the cloud accounting products the technology wise they were always there but these were disruptions waiting to happen and the pandemic just induced that okay so we see similar disruptions uh, that are waiting to happen in payments com commerce and uh, credits i will just talk about payments first we have alternate rails that are emerging so for a very long time uh, we know we know the monopoly or the duopolies who have been uh, literally dominating uh, this market and uh, credit cards generally dominate right uh, because of uh, various reasons uh, the ease of use uh, the seamless uh, uh, the payments that they have and all those right but now we have we see challenges uh, challenges emerging we have something called uh, upi in india for people in the western uh, part of the world maybe uh, this is new but uh, here in in the east or particularly in india uh, literally everyone uses it um, even everyone uses it even for a micro transaction transaction like um, uh, two cents three cents right so it makes it so convenient right um, so similarly we have uh, uh, pix emerging in brazil uh, fed now is emerging in us but again uh, it's not that popular it's slowly emerging but i'm sure like uh, uh, that again will po become popular over a period of time so so we see alternate uh, rails emerging and uh, the reason why these things are becoming popular today is one is ease of use ease of adoption right cost effectiveness so typically when we are talking about credit card particularly in us we talk about 2.9 cents uh, 2.9 percentage plus 30 cents uh, in other parts of the world it's slightly lesser but still it's costly when compared to the new payment rails uh, as i told you like um, upi makes it convenient even to accept a few cents their 2.9 percentage plus 30 cents doesn't even make sense right so cost effectiveness and we also have a lot of value added services over these rails like say for example uh, uh, credits on this rails uh, even atm withdrawals are being enabled on this rails okay so things becomes lot easier and another most important reason is even they are getting the backing from the central government right say for example in india, one one of the reason why actually upi is very popular in india is the push aggressive push by the central bank of india right so so that's the reason why we are i am i am reasonably confident that this time it's a real threat to the existing uh, rails because earlier we have seen a few things emerging and then slowly dying down but this time it's slightly different because they are being backed by the governments or the central banks so uh, two examples that i spoke about uh, uh, pix in brazil um, uh, upi in india and uh, fednow in us uh, fednow as you said is not uh, that popular so this is the kind of uh, growth and transaction that see, we well, see well, uh, as a my experience in india last year was this was one of the most frustrating things as an outsider right 
people didn't want to take credit cards, especially the car company did not want to take a Western credit card, right? And so we had to constantly be looking for cash and the ATM machines. I mean, one of them gave me 100 rupees maximum, 100 rupees, right? Oh. So it was like every morning my wife would say, go get us a few a few thousand rupees. <laughs> that, that was the least pleasant part of being in India. So hopefully, oh, okay. hopefully you would change it and make it a lot easier next time I'm back. <laughs> So that's 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 a problem that uh, that is getting solved. Uh, I've just mentioned it in the lower part of my slide. Uh, UPA is actually going international, and uh, and we see it seamlessly working with the other rails, right? Uh, say for example, now you can use UPA in Singapore, UAE, and uh, France. Okay, so UPA is going international based on the popularity. Obviously, it's just a question of time uh, before which actually the other governments start something similar, or even the UPA by itself. Uh, will become very uh, uh, entrenched and uh, will go international. That's my uh, uh, take on this. Um, so most most uh, probably next time when you are here, uh, your credit card will seamlessly work with UPA. Okay, so that's that's something that might happen in the next uh, uh, few years. And you can actually see the growth, right? Twenty sixteen. Um, that is, if if you have to, if the Fed now guys have to take some uh, uh, this thing. They can actually look at uh, UPI. 2016, it was absolutely nowhere. 2017, it had a very small growth, 2018. And then actually look at it. Now we are talking about 12 billion transactions a month and uh, the volume of transaction is about $220 billion a month. There is a precedent in you know, the Oyster card, right? I mean, that that has spread around the world. You, you know, the transit card that's used on London Underground and it, it's very popular in Hong Kong and so on. So. That's a precedent that's been happening for decades. So I'm sure UPI will disrupt the payment ecosystem. Yeah. So it's not just about UPI. The thing is like uh, now most of the governments are realizing that uh, the interchange need not be that high, right? Um, so just spending about 3% of your uh, uh, transaction is not it's not worth it. So, so that's where I see uh, uh, this disruption happening. And uh, we are actually getting into the payments business. So that's why I said like we are not just an accounting software. So we are into operations, we are into payments. This is exciting. This this is very differentiated because you're getting into treasury and banking and all those other things that many accounting software never managed to penetrate. Correct. And, and the best part is like uh, whenever we get into it, uh, we actually try to own the complete stack. Okay. So we start somewhere, but over a period of time, we own the complete stack. So it's it's not like uh, we just uh, uh, take some other player, uh, uh, just rebrand them and use it as our payment technology. We don't do that. So we own the technology end to end. So that's what we do. And uh, the best part is like, uh, we are not used to the high margin. So we don't have the baggage. So when we get in, we can be more experimental. And uh, since we have alternate revenue channels, we can actually make a huge difference in this area. So that's, that's what our bet is, right? So we are not used to this 2.9 plus 30, right? So we can actually uh, uh, be a lot more experimental, a lot more aggressive in uh, the various markets. And uh, the, the best part is like, we start our game in a market where actually it is very difficult to make money in payments. Say India, uh, the UPI, the MDR is zero. So it is very difficult to make money in payments in India. So we start there. And then when we expand to other countries in US, this 2.9 plus 30 becomes a luxury for us. So we can afford to do a lot of experiments. We don't have the baggage. We can actually make it uh, big. So that's that's a, that'll be our mode. And uh, so the second thing that I want to talk about is uh, the e-commerce, right? Just like the payment industry, there is a lot of change that is happening in uh, e-commerce. Um, so if you actually look at uh, the e-commerce market overall, um, they talk about it's it's about a trillion dollars, okay? But still, if you actually look at uh, the uh, the penetration, right? Uh, this this slide actually gives you the data. Um, the penetration is very less, particularly if you actually uh, look at uh, countries like India or other Asian countries. The penetration is really really less. But the penetration is decent when it comes to China or uh, US, right? The global average is about twenty percent. So just imagine what will happen if even the others, the, the others who don't have access to this e-commerce industry gets into e-commerce, right? The potential is really huge. So that's that's the kind of uh, uh, change that this can bring in. 
However, there are some challenges for players to get in, right? If you are actually talking about a small enterprise or a SME um, to get into e-commerce, there are a lot of challenges. One is the technology barrier. First and foremost, they will not know what is the platform that they can use, sure. um, the, the product that they can use. Uh, there will be challenges in even using the platform. If they, Even if they decide on a particular platform, it will be very difficult for them to get the training and all those, right? So that is that is one barrier. And second thing is like, even let's, let's say like they have adopted a particular platform and they have hosted all their products and all those. Discoverability is again the next problem, right? And say I as a small business can always take uh, Zoho's commerce platform and then uh, host all my products. But how will I get customers? So whenever we talk about uh, commerce, people generally go to all the popular marketplaces and search for the products there. So discoverability is a huge issue, even if I am able to solve the technology barrier, right? And let's say like I even cross that okay let's say like okay i don't want to get into this discoverability issue i i can uh, actually get on to a uh, popular marketplace and uh, host my products there right the challenge there is we don't have a lot of marketplaces we have only one or two of them who dominate the market and they squeeze the smes for commission sure right and what happens is even let's say like i as a small business or a medium business i'm okay with the commission okay let let me give that commission and then my product becomes very popular in the marketplace then I stand a risk of what we what I call as Amazonification. Okay, so what I mean by that is uh, uh, the marketplaces will actually uh, put out a private uh, uh, label, a private brand of my product, and uh, they will steal the market from me. Right. So that's that's a real risk that I stand. So there are huge challenges for a SME to uh, get onto this. Right. If you, if you want to come out of this, the solution is we have to break the monopolies and democratize e-commerce. Right. And that is exactly what is happening in India. So we have, again, we have some of these things um, uh, getting introduced in India, but I'm sure like whenever something good happens, uh, this actually uh, uh, crosses all the borders and sure. uh, gets adopted very quickly across uh, the globe, right? So that's that's how I look at all this. So we have ONDC. ONDC stands for Open Network for Digital Commerce. So what ONDC does is it completely democratizes and uh, disintermediates e-commerce so what it does is like it does essentially two things one is it unbundles and it is also a standard for interoperability what i mean by unbundling is see today you have popular marketplaces and if some new player wants to come in and create a marketplace it's a huge challenge because the existing marketplaces spends billions of dollars on both the sides one is to acquire customers on one side and then to uh, encourage sellers to sell on their platform on the other side and then they also spend it on the logistics so there are three different challenges here and uh, the existing marketplaces since spends billions of dollars right and the new player might be good in one thing like say for example they might have a lot of consumers but they may not be good in attracting the sellers or maybe they will not have, be able to handle the logistics problem so what ONDC does is it completely unbundles if you are a good digital platform with a lot of customer base, you don't have to worry about the sellers or you don't have to worry about the logistics. You just be on the platform and use the protocol. The protocol will make things interoperable between the various players. There can be another player who is actually very good in uh, the seller apps. Like say, for example, take Zoho as an example. We have millions of merchants, millions of customers who sell products, who do various services and all those. So we can be a seller app platform and we can actually onboard the sellers and then we can connect to any of the buyer apps okay the buyer apps has a lot of consumers and then similarly uh, a platform which is powerful in logistics can get in so it makes things easy for the whole ecosystem that is what ondc is all about so we are seeing some good traction for ondc in india as well and typically when we talk about uh, uh, marketplace what comes to our mind is players like amazon who sells goods right but ONDC is actually challenging a lot of different verticals, a lot of different domains. Like say, for example, Namayadri uh, in Bangalore. I don't, know, I don't know whether you got a chance to use it when you were in, uh, in India. Uh, this is very popular in uh, Bangalore. Um, so this is actually giving um, a serious challenge to the likes of uh, uh, Ula, uh, Uber. Uber and Ola, right? Similarly, the other areas. I'm not getting into all those details. You know, one, one thing that is challenging for a lot of Emerging markets is um, last mile logistics, reverse logistics. Is how is that coming along? See, that's that's a challenge, right? It's not easy to solve. But the best part is it is 
splitting the problem and making different players handle right. different challenges. Right. So that's how we are challenged. That is, that is how the ONDC is envisioning to challenge the problem or uh, trying to solve the problem, right? So obviously for one player to handle all this, uh, um, maybe uh, just sending out the goods or handling the reverse logistics and all those things is going to be a problem. Um, I won't say all the problems are solved and it is a cakewalk for uh, uh, all the companies to get in, but at least it solves like, say, two thirds of my problems. Other one third of the problem, I will have to figure it out, right? So we are still figuring it out. Things are actually uh, growing. Things are looking better and uh, more and more players are slowly getting in and uh, players are actually figuring out a way to solve the problems uh, and uh, solve the challenges. Excellent. Fine. And uh, uh, Zoho, we are an e-commerce operator in ONDC network. So this is this is a very different challenge, right? Um, so we are, Zoho is known for uh, software, right? We are known for building uh, software, uh, churning out products one after the other. Now we are actually uh, entering into a completely different area. So that is why I actually named this section as Beyond Software. So uh, if you actually look at payments, uh, payments is not just a technology problem. Payments is more of technology plus operations problem, right? So you'll have to handle various things right from your uh, uh, KYC to uh, AML to various other things. So it's a huge uh, operational problem. We have to underwrite the merchants. There is a lot of risk. Uh, uh, we have to do a FRM, fraud and uh, uh, risk management. Um, uh, so, so there are whole different uh, uh, set of challenges other than technology. Yes, we can be, uh, we can have a powerful technology stack, but the operation brings its own challenges, which we are solving in um, the payments. Similarly, if you actually talk about uh, e-commerce um, in ONDC, we have a huge set of uh, operational challenges which are, which are very different from what we are doing in payments, right? Say, for example, take ONDC. In India, the marketplaces have to collect the TCS uh, whenever a merchant sells something and then uh, they have to remit the taxes, right? <laughs> this by itself is a huge challenge. And there are like uh, uh, several states. So all these operational headaches we are taking up. So this, this is really new to us, but we are actually learning and we are growing. Uh, so that's what we are doing in commerce. And similarly, credits, if you actually look at it, uh, uh, in India, we have something called OKEN. OKEN stands for Open Credit Enablement Network. So this is, you can actually roughly equate this because I'm not getting into the details of technology uh, due to the lack of time. Uh, you can roughly equate this to uh, OKEN, uh, sorry, uh, ONDC. Just like the way ONDC is uh, uh, dividing the problem and trying to solve it, uh, even Open is doing the same. So whenever it comes to lending, it has two problems, two challenges. One is the reach. How can I reach out to make potential customers? And then you have the fund problem, right? So what Open is doing is it is connecting the lenders and the digital pl platforms. So the digital platform, one of the good examples for digital platform can be uh, um, uh, a food delivery application. Right. The food delivery application has contacts with a lot of restaurants and they know like what is what are the kind of orders that these restaurants take and uh, what is the cash flow and all those things. So they can actually be the digital platform and knowing all this information, they can make it easy to help the restaurant get money from one of the, one of the lenders. What Oaken does is it helps connect the digital platform with the lenders. So Oaken Rails does that. Right. So that is that is what is happening in credit. And slowly, we are also getting into that. Or is this more consumer credit or uh, commercial credit or both? This is this actually can be both. That is, if you talk about Oaken, this is for both. And um, uh, this also makes it uh, easy for uh, uh, the low ticket loans, right? Uh, so it can it can even be... Uh, micro, micro, many, micro loans, right? Yeah, yeah micro loans of... Uh, in India, even uh, you, you will have loans for about, uh, say, $2, $3, right? Uh, daily loans, right? So uh, Oaken is facilitating that. And uh, slowly we are also experimenting and we are getting into that, Oaken. So we we as a company, we are actually getting into looking at all this disruption and we are seeing as to how we can actually make the best use of all this. And we are slowly getting into some of these things, okay? So we will we will share more details when we launch all these products. But the thing is like, what, what I can share now is like, we are slowly getting into some of these things or all of these things, the three things that I talk, spoke about. It may look as if we are doing too many things. Uh, so we have a suite of products for SMEs. Uh, we have a suite of products uh, that is uh, uh, coming up for enterprises. Uh, I talk about uh, payments. I talk about uh, uh, the, the credit part, uh, the, the e-commerce, uh, with ONDC and all those things, right? So the real power is actually uh, connecting all these dots. It's not about just throwing out uh, uh, products one after the other, but to 
but to guide the customer give him the right solution and guide him the right way like say for example uh, helping the customer uh, sell online with the commerce store and then helping him with the inventory management problem then giving him something like oh hey, you are using these two uh, we can also make it easy for you to do accounting give give the accounting part right and once he has all the three we can also make it easy for the payments i think to answer your question are you doing too many things it's a question of when are you planning to release these different things did are you have you have you started to announce when some of these things will be available yeah uh, you should be seeing some of these things uh, uh, this year like say for example uh, uh, ondc we already have a platform um, so uh, we have onboarded we have started onboarding uh, customers and we are seeing thousands of orders on a daily basis uh, that's on the commerce part payments you should be seeing some of the announcement uh, uh, later this year so in fact uh, we have started giving early access to some of the customers and uh, uh, we have onboarded uh, uh, thousands of customers okay. but uh, again uh, uh, thousand is not a huge number for our scale um, since we already have a platform where millions of customers are using us uh, it's not a huge number for our scale we want to uh, we we have set ourselves a threshold and when we cross the threshold we will make a public launch of uh, the payments product um similarly we have uh, um slowly started experimenting with some of the financial services uh, uh, part for the credit as well now you made you made the point yourself that the enterprise is quite different right not just the platform the go to market is also different right when are you going to start to announce some of that i completely agree with you enterprise is a very uh, very different uh, ball game right uh, so even uh, i agree with you the 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 go to market uh, the way we actually uh, uh, do the selling all those things is going to be different so uh, selling to a uh, sme uh, you can even it's pretty, have, digital. It's pretty uh, digital yeah it's very digital right correct so so you can just have a digital uh, this thing and uh, you can expect uh, a few hundred or a few thousand customers to sign up your product and uh, they can try they can use and then they can uh, get on board but that's not never the case with the enterprise you will have to go and do a hard sell you should have an enterprise uh, selling team so these are some of the challenges that uh, we will have to face we will have we as a company uh, we will have to learn um, we will have to uh, get it done but the thing is like uh, uh, so we have um, uh, a lot of different channels of revenue so that that actually will give us the the time and energy to actually uh, uh, solve the other problem the gtm problem of uh, the enterprise well i'm looking forward to hearing that plan a little more a little more definitive plan on that i'm sure you you know when you're ready you will share that with us but yes. um, yeah now this is i mean this is your vision is so broad and i'm i'm really pleased to see that you know like you say it's not just core accounting it's much much broader you're really getting into vertical this is this is a banking and financial services vertical offering just about yes um thanks thanks for that i'm seeing a lot of interest especially in industrial equipment makers on the whole asset area so what's happening in that sector is if finding products get commoditized much quicker than they ever did right even if they're selling airplanes or mining equipment or you know the complex assets so they're moving more and more into services maintenance monitoring and they're selling much more um as a service but outcome based right so like rolls royce aviation doesn't sell engines anymore to airlines they sell power by the hour so if a plane takes off they get paid if it doesn't take off then they don't get paid right so it but to be able to do that there's so much technology needed digital twins iot complex configurators for bringing in product and service and financing and all that right so there's a lot of interest in asset management and related maintenance and related service so you know maybe something you want to think about i know you're plenty on your plate but maybe something you want to think about is the asset accounting area asset in general not just accounting is a is going asset to be management. your opportunity yeah i completely agree with you uh, and uh, this reminds me of uh, sridhar even talking about uh, um, just solving uh, things for the uh, enterprise like say for example whatever sridhar says is like when a customer comes to us and uh, he sees some uh, gaps in the product then we have to just take it up and uh, solve the problem for the customers without charging them for it 
so they don't stand any risk right uh, they just give us the requirements and then they start using the uh, the product and uh, we just charge for the license without uh, charging anything for the customization um, because customization could be um, uh, will be our ip right uh, so we can actually solve the end to end problem for them so they stand to gain because they don't have to pay anything for uh, uh, the, the services part and uh, they just uh, enjoy uh, the, in the, when the deployment is successful and they are happy about it, they start paying for the license. So this is something similar that you are talking about in a different industry. I completely agree with that. And uh, asset management is one uh, large area that we have to focus on. Uh, so we will have uh, the fixed asset management and all those parts uh, coming into our product uh, uh, very quickly. Um, but whatever you are talking about is much broader. So definitely uh, that's, that's sometime down the line. Uh, it, it, it's, it's a huge, huge market. Because as you know, complex assets. If you think about industries, they're from everywhere from manufacturing to anything that has robotics to utilities to aviation, shipping, mining. So something something that could be it could be a very 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 big sector for you. I agree. Well, see, what well, this is fantastic. Thank you so much. Thanks, Vinay. Thanks for your time, and uh, no, thanks for having me on this. You know, come back come back every six months give me an update we'd love to have you every few months and you could share hey my vision has grown or no it's not grown but i'm delivering this 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 either either way come and present every few sure, months i'll be happy to do that keep on doing what you're doing thank you thank you well that was impressive uh i mentioned we were going to talk about zoho's ambitions in many different dimensions zoho has already been globalizing for years. I've interviewed several of their regional heads uh, in other episodes, but it was uh, also interesting to see how they're trying to move into the enterprise and also all the different industries they'll be touching on, from financial services to retail to logistics and so on. I mean, all this is going to take, you know, a lot more investment, slightly different culture, go to market, uh, channels, etc. So it's going to be fascinating to see how you know Zoho makes that transition. But they, they, they've they've been very successful delivering to what they promise uh, for several years now. So you know I don't have any I don't have any doubts they'll continue to do pretty well. But you know we look forward to hosting them every few months and see how they make progress.